Good to have you with us this morning. All eyes are on the Bank of Canada, which, as we mentioned, is set to make an interest rate decision in less than an hour. At 9.45 Eastern time, the Canadian Central Bank is likely to announce it is keeping rates unchanged for the fourth consecutive meeting. At least that's the consensus on Bay Street. While recent economic data would suggest the Canadian economy has nearly stalled, we've heard central bankers talk about lingering inflation risks. And after being late to the party on tackling inflation, the general view has been that the Bank of Canada doesn't want to end its inflation fight too early, even if, ironically, higher interest rates feed into some of the price pressures for Canadians, things like mortgage costs and home rental prices. Now, currently, most economists see the Bank of Canada starting to cut rates by June, which raises the question, will the bank today give any hints on when rate cuts could actually come? Well, one thing experts say is that Tiff Macklin wants to avoid a repeat of what happened last January when he declared a so-called conditional pause in rates, prompting a rebound in our housing market, which in turn fueled inflationary pressure. So as you can tell, all of this connective tissue makes for quite the balancing act for Macklin. All that said, let's not forget that in the stock market recently, some of those near-term expectations for American rates cuts have cooled off. That arguably takes some short-term pressure off Macklin to do anything more than hold the line, but we will have to wait to see what happens today. On that note, let's set up the day ahead. Joining us to preview the bank's decision is Carl Shimada. He's chief market strategist at Corpe and one of our regular guests here in the open. Nice to see you. You as well. Okay, so let's start with your expectations for what the bank does today. Yeah, I, th I would very much agree with everything that you said in the opening statement there. So the, the key here is that uh, the bank does not want to encourage the bulls too much here, does not want to encourage a overheat in housing markets or in Canadian uh, consumer consumption. So they are going to deliver a consistently hawkish me message in line with what they have been doing in the prior statements is what I would guess. Now, the fun part, of course, today is that we're talking right now. Um, the joke in, in FX world, in, in the FX world, is that uh, economists usually take like a couple of months to be proven wrong. And I'm uh, and, and FX uh, traders get proven wrong in a couple of seconds. Today, it might be about 45 minutes before I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the pressure's on, I think, in the, in the FX world on the money side, a little bit more... Uh... Uh, th than on the economy Indeed. side. But but speaking of, you know, people positioning, the idea of positioning for rate cuts in 2024 is the right positioning? Yes, I think I think at the end of the day, markets are now relatively well aligned with what the bank actually is going to deliver. And that's that's a big departure from where we were back in October, for example. At that time, uh, markets had anticipated this really, really aggressive easing cycle. Uh, we did begin to see a bit of a shift uh, toward the end of December, firstly on the basis of a stronger than expected U.S. economy. But then we saw something similar happening here in Canada. The fact that, you know, the underlying inflation pressures uh, under the hood in Canada started to accelerate toward year end. The fact that consumers started to spend more, um, as evidenced in the uh, surprisingly hot retail sales print for uh, for December, that has all uh, sort of weighed against that idea that uh, that a rapid and aggressive easing cycle is in the offing, right? It, it does not seem like a very prudent move for the Bank of Canada to begin cutting rates dramatically or signaling that they're going to do so if that inflationary risk still exists and if the economy does not necessarily need that impetus. I guess the, the question is, you know, we live next to uh, a very large country where there's a very large market narrative around what happens with interest rates. It's hard to get a word in sometimes. Indeed. But uh, it's a different economy here. Obviously, the productivity story is a different one in Canada, so that's a consideration. Uh, obviously, we've got such strong ties to the housing market and household debt is a, a very watched metric, even if it's not sort of part of the inflation story per se. Right. So um, how does the Bank of Canada navigate that if the U.S. economy, let's say, stays somewhat resilient and the Fed doesn't feel pressure to, to move too, too far on interest rates. Yeah, in I think we have a sort of a bifurcated look, outlook here because the big issue is that we had that massive easing in financial conditions between October and November of last year, right? So what that did was it sort of pushed Canadians to go back out there and, and to, to you know begin buying houses again. We might actually see a bit of a dead cat bounce in the housing market in the early uh, spring. Um, all of that means that the difference between U.S 
and Canadian uh, economic outcomes might narrow a bit for a couple of months. However, as you mentioned, uh, the, the deeper vulnerabilities in the Canadian economy are likely to reassert themselves further out in the year. Um, the lagging impact of that tightening cycle that has occurred over the last year and a half is likely to continue to constrain household uh, consumption and, and real estate activity. That's likely to weigh on, on, on the economy. The only caveat to all of that is if we do see a U.S. economy that absolutely blows the doors off, um, which is entirely possible at this point, um, we could see all of this being overturned and we could see a couple of central banks that essentially, you know, maybe cut once or twice and then need to stop. So reasons to stay on hold today, um, uh, a reasonable uh, uh, expectation um, that rate cuts are coming this year. Um, if you had to guess how many times the Bank of Canada might cut rates this year based on everything you said, what do you think is a reasonable expectation for Canadians? I think three. I, I think three cuts 25 are 25 basis points? Yes. Three? Yeah, so um, starting in, in June, r roughly, uh, it would be when the first cut would come, um, and then two more in the autumn. And, and in the U.S., we might see it move a little bit faster. We might see something, um, you know, June, and then front-loaded at consecutive meetings so that they're essentially getting ahead of the U.S. election cycle. Um, so what that does mean is that rates, you know, do come down, that we do have slightly easier financial conditions, but tighter than where they were back in October, November, right? So ultimately, that means that there's still drag on asset prices, that there's still drag on, on household budgets, um, but that, uh, that we are moving in the right direction over time. And if they were to move, in theory, if they were to move further, more aggressively on rate cuts than that, it would indicate that there's a lot more damage being done to the economy itself? That's right. And I do think that by the end of this year, we are going to be pricing in more aggressive cuts from the Bank of Canada than from the Fed. So. The, the into, like moving into next year, yes. you're saying, and that's going to be got a lot key. of rolling mortgages and stuff like that. That's going to be the key, right? You know, if you think about what what uh, we should expect for 2025 and 2026, it's clear that there's still a renewal cliff ahead of us. That there is still going to be pain uh, inflicted on the economy, um, and that should mean that uh, that that more interest rate sensitive economy here in Canada uh, exhibits more signs of a slowdown than the U.S. The U.S. could go into more of a mild slowdown, but uh, uh, the effects should be more profound here in Canada. Carl, just a, a quick last question on this on this story about inflation, because you hear every pundit has a different view on it. You know, some say we're nearing the finish line. Others say there's all these factors that have changed the dynamics of prices. So we're stuck with this inflation for uh, for a long period of time. And people are making investment decisions based around the inflation outlook. What would be your, your, your view on that? My view is inflation is going to continue coming down. I think that uh, we did see a very very brief uh, upsurge there that a lot of it was in shelter, which should really be looked through by policymakers. Um, but if we look at the global dynamics that are that underpin inflation, they are trending down, um, even though we have a small rise in shipping costs. Um, the reality is that uh, that the cost of manufactured products is coming down across the planet particularly led by what's happening in China. Um, and if we look at money growth, which is sort of an old fashioned way to look at how the economy functions, right? Money growth has been really, really negative uh, for a long time. And if we look at that on an 18 month lagged basis, it has been negative for a long, long time at this point. That usually precedes a drop in inflation. So I would guess that the Bank of Canada reaches its target uh, before the end of this year. Um, and that means that, you know, that they are going to, if as long as they follow sort of canonical policy rules, that they do need to cut rates just to bring policy back into a, a neutral uh, setting. Okay. A lot to chew on there. We go deep enough that we can talk money growth, which yep. is a great thing about having you on <laughs> and talking about the outlook for the economy. Carl, thanks very much for the preview. Very helpful. Thank you. Carl Shimada is the Chief Market Strategist at CorePay. And